Hello guys, welcome back. Today we're going to talk about glycogenesis or glycogen metabolism, basically breakdown of glycogen. No, a formation or synthesis of glycogen. So this is a uh, metabolism, basically this is a catabolism, uh, anabolism. We're making up, we're making a molecule from small to big. So this is anabolism. Uh, so it is glycogenesis or um, glycogen metabolism and glycogenesis means glyco means glycogen and genesis means synthesis so synthesis of glycogen now uh, where does it occur it occurs in muscles because glycogen is stored and uh, it is used in anaerob anaerobic respiration and in liver it also occurs um, to uh, tr store the excess glucose and also to maintain and then it is broken down to uh, maintain the glucose in the body and blood and now 10% uh, of the liver actually contains 10 gram of glycogen so that is how important glycogen is so glycogen is actually a major storage carbohydrate in animals and plants it is stored as granules in cytosol so it is present in cytosol as small granules and it also occur, it occurs in livers and muscles as I said. In liver it is 8 to 10 by weight and it maintains blood glucose level and, and in muscles it is 1 to 2 percent by weight and it serves as a fuel reservoir for the synthesis of ATP during muscle uh, contraction. So in liver it is used to, for maintaining blood glucose level and in muscles it is used uh, for, uh, to, uh, for energy so it produces atp so and it's the main storage carbohydrate okay in animals now what is glycogenesis genesis is the synthesis of glycogen from glucose and where does the styles of storage of glycogen is of course liver and muscle and where does this uh, glycogenesis occurs it occurs in liver and muscles and where in them in their uh, cytosol the in the cytosol of their cells and uh, it requires energies which is supplied by ATP and it requires an another important molecule you're hearing of this first time uridine triphosphate UTP so reactions of glycogenesis uh, initial reaction is like gly glycolysis it is a uh, phosphorylation of glucose glucose is phosphorylated to glu uh, glucose 6 phosphate uh, by the enzyme hexokinase which is in muscles and if it's occurring in liver it's glucokinase so hexokinase is in muscles and glucokinase is in liver so in glycogenesis we first convert the glucose into glucose 6 phosphate and uh, the phosphate of course comes from uh, where uh, it comes from atp so we're uh, atp gets converted into ADP plus phosphate and the enzyme is hexokinase and also magnesium ion is required for this step also okay next is step 2 is isomerization the glucose 6 phosphate is isomerized to 6 uh, uh, glucose 1 phosphate so it is converted to glucose 1 phosphate and the <coughs> uh, pres uh, presence of mutase enzyme or uh, phosphoglucomutase so this is the structure next we have is synthesis of UDP glucose so in this step UDP glucose is synthesized how uh, by the enzyme uh, UDP glucose uh, phosphorylase uridine uh, UDP is uridine diphosphate and UTP is uridine triphosphate and you uh, what is it it's like uh, 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 prim it's a nucleoside uh, like ATP and GTP, it's uh, one of those forms. So, uridine diphosphate is a primitive nucleoside triphosphate of uracil and it is used in glycogen and RNA synthesis. And uh, so, what happens? Uh, how is uridine diphosphate added? <coughs> so, basically, um, we add uh, glucose 1 phosphate, uh, 1 phosphate reacts with uridine triphosphate and it forms alpha glucose, which attaches to the UDP and it also forms pyrophosphate which is released so we add a triphosphate we add a UTP to GTP G1P and we get a UDP glucose so one phosphate is released and it, it gets converted into phosphate and, and phosphophosphate or for a pyrophosphate PP and the other is UDP glucose okay 
next we have is formation of glycogen uh, primer a small fragment of pre-existing glycogen is necessary to initiate glycogen synthesis so it is called glycogen primer and that primer we call its name is glycogenin it is a protein uh, primer glycogen it accepts glucose from udp glucose and the oh of the amino acid tyrosine of glucogenin is the site at which initial glucose units is attached and uh, fructose uh, further uh, udp glucose residues are linked with the alpha 1 4 glycosidic bond to form glycogen primer so basically our uh, udp is basically a transporter it uh, trans uh, utp utp combines with glucose and when it comes into the form udp glucose this udp glucose then can combine with the primer glycogen glycogenin uh, which is the um, primer and uh, it is uh, a protein glycogenin and it has the amino acid tyrosine and tyrosine has the as we studied had the OH group attached to it so it is called uh, so it is from where the bond can form so as you can see tyrosol glycogen and it has OH UDP is attached to it so it attaches UDP to it and uh, U, uh, UDP is the release so UDP was just still here so it attached with this molecule and then it got released so this was the small role of uh, UDP next we have is uh, elongation of the chain and uh, oh also here uh, so how we're gonna elongate it we're gonna get a lot of UDP glucose and uh, they're gonna keep adding to the glycogen primer which we have uh, uh, the tyrosol uh, uh, glucose tyrosine glucose and um, we're just gonna keep adding into it by and uh, making the link uh, alpha 1 for linkage and it occurs in the presence of the same enzyme next we have is branching at glycogen so after 11 glucose residues branching enzyme it transfers a part of the alpha 1 4 chain and uh, which is a set of 6 to 8 glucose residue to the neighboring chain so after eight molecules we want to synthesize glycogen further but we cannot keep adding it to straight so we make a branch and that branching is done by a branching enzyme and um, transfer so uh, the transfer is done from non-reducing end of glycogen to the non-terminal glucose residue and they form the linkage one with six now if we're doing branching the linkage is one six and we're do if we're doing a straight chain the linkage is um, uh, um, alpha one four linkage and the glucosyl alpha wars and six transferase enzyme they are involved in this glycogen synthase it elongates the new branch and the old by adding glucose subunits from udp glucose so basically the glucose that we're adding is in the form of udp glucose so that's why we need utp uridine diphosphate triphosphate and branching makes the glycogen water soluble and it also increases the non-reducing ends of glycogen so as you can see here we added the this was the glycogen that we were synthesizing and then we added a branch and this keeps on adding in the presence of glycogen synthase this enzyme what you think it will do of course it will synthesize glycogen and now we keep adding the chain we transferred the chain that we were going to add here onto this and so we uh, keep adding chains in different uh, directions and so we get glycogen and the straight straight bond is uh, uh, glyco uh, one four glycosidic bond and the branched one is one six branched we saw uh, we show it by a line in between and c14 is labeled glucose residue and uh, this one these ones are the glucose uh, molecules so basically the basic step in this our glucose is converted into glucose 6 phosphate and then glucose 1 phosphate and then udp glucose and then into uh, glucose uh, number of molecules and then and branching converts it into glucose n plus and this is uh, so glucose to glucose 6 phosphate is by hexokinase glucose 6 phosphate to glucose 1 phosphate is by udp glucose uh, pyrophosphorylate and udp glucose to the glucose molecule long chain is by glycogen synthase and branching enzyme converts it into the branching one and so basically we need the uh, three important two important things U utp and glycogen and the branching enzyme so this is how we get glycogen and then this glycogen so this is basically glycogen long chain of glucose molecules and it is stored in liver and muscles and so on so a structure you can draw um, first you 
crochet in a ring form or a straight form and of course you add fast forward to it so you add fast forward and then you can also so the first step is phosphorylation second step is isomerization when we convert glucose 6 phosphate to glucose 1 phosphate and then we convert the udp that is when phosphate is released and then we at the step in which we have the primer which is glycogen synthase it initiates it or glycogen here uh, you can write this step as auto glyco glycosylation because we need a primer the glycogen is required for its synthesis and U uh, UDP it brings UDP glucose and glucose binds and UDP is released basically that's the step so we form from 1 to 11 and then further we can um, form and this elongation is by glycogen synthase and then glyco glycosyl 4 6 transferase it does the branching um, we also call it the branching uh, enzyme and forms alpha 1 6 glycosidic linkage and alpha 1 4 linkage so that is it for glycogenesis and this uh, every cycle in the body is very important as our uh, health is the one in which we have a proper maintenance of all the metabolism that is going on in the body so we need every form we need the glycogen in stored form we also need to break it down we cannot have one form only they need to interconvert so that's how the life of the body goes on anyways and uh, this was quite uh, easy lecture if you still did not understand or if you have any doubts make the uh, please um uh, i'll be happy to answer your questions in the comments if you have any questions any doubts you can clear them and don't forget to subscribe and support this channel as it supports to uh, and motivates to make more videos i hope you guys understood this lecture thank you